So are you interested in learning more about brewing with Kvike yeast? Well, I am. So for this one, I brewed a three gallon smash beer that I split into three fermenters, one with USO5, one with Lutra, and one with Voss. We'll stick around and see how they compare. Well, welcome back to Cascades Homebrew. My name is Brent. So I've used Voss several times in hoppy beer, say pale ales, IPAs. I always thought the orange character from the yeast complemented hops well and it worked well in those styles. In fact, one of the favorite recipes is the hazy pale ale recipe that I brewed and I have a video of. I thought it turned out really well. I used Citra and Cascade along with a Voss to really amp up that citrus character and it really comes out in the final beer. So I've recently started playing around a little bit more with Lutra, especially now that it's available in a dry form. It gets a lot of attention in pseudo lagers, say a Pilsner that's fermented hot and quick. So instead of doing a traditional lager, which may take a month, you can potentially turn over a Pilsner in say a week, or maybe two weeks. So personally, I have a little more interest in using Lutra, say as a clean ale yeast. So would Lutra be good, say in an American blonde or a porter? Would Lutra be a good yeast say, for a new brewer that doesn't have fermentation temperature control? Would Lutra be a good yeast for me, say when my fermentation chamber is tied up with another beer and I want to brew something else? So as a first step in answering those questions, I brewed a three gallon batch that I split into three fermenters, USO5, Lutra, and Voss. So why did I choose USO5? Well, USO5 or the other California ale, Chico, they're kind of a standard general purpose yeast that a lot of brewers use. So I figured that would be a good comparison. So one thing about these type of experiments is there's a lot of ways that can be structured. So in my case, I fermented the Lutra and the Voss at warm temperatures, basically a warm room temperature. Basically the idea was there was, hey, I'm somebody that doesn't have fermentation temperature control, and maybe in the summer I have a warm place in my house. So in that case, can I use a Kvike yeast like Lutra or Voss to brew a beer? And then I firm in the USO5 batch under temperature control using kind of a standard schedule that I would use for a typical ale yeast where I start it kind of cool, maybe ramp it up a little bit during fermentation. So at least to me, it didn't make much sense to push the USO5 into warm temperatures where it's probably not going to perform very well. And it also didn't make sense to push the Kvikes down into cool temperatures where they're not going to perform. So today I'm just going to give a quick overview of the recipe and the brew day. So we can get into the fermentation and then tasting these beers. That's the important thing here. But if you are interested in learning more about small batch stovetop brew in the bag brewing, well check out some of my other videos. My recent one on brewing a Simcoe Pale Ale is a pretty good overview of my process. The only real difference here was that I increased the batch size a little bit to get a full three gallons into the fermenters. But given that it was a fairly light grain bill, it wasn't that much work. I was still able to do a full volume mash. So the recipe for this one was a Maris Otter Brew One Smash Beer. Kind of in an American pale ale style. As I mentioned, I targeted three gallons into the fermenter, so about 11.4 liters. So the calculated bitterness on this one was about 52 IBUs. I don't think it's quite that bitter. The color was a fairly light color, 4.6 SRM. So smash beer is a single malt and single hot beer. I have kind of mixed feelings about smash beers. Some base grains are kind of plain just on their own. Some beers are better with say two, maybe three hop combinations. But smash beers can be easy to brew and they help you identify characteristics of individual ingredients. So I kind of figured in this case, a simple beer would help me identify the different characters of the yeast. So the grain bill, as I mentioned, 100% Maris Otter. So I used 5.5 pounds, about 2.5 kilograms. The mash won this for 60 minutes at 152 degrees Fahrenheit or 67 degrees Celsius. Boil for 30 minutes. So the hops on this, again, a single hop, brew one. So at 10 minutes, I added three quarters of an ounce or 21 grams of brew one for a steep that started at 180 degrees Fahrenheit or 82 degrees Celsius for 20 minutes. I added one and a half ounce or 43 grams of brew one. This batch did not get any dry hop. So just those two hop additions. So the yeast for this one. So I decided to go for a quarter pack for each of the yeast. That was 2.7 grams of the Lalamon dried Voss, 2.7 grams of the dried Omega Lutra, and then 3.9 grams of the Fermentus USO5. I direct pitch each of those into the fermenter. Now, as far as the brew day, it was a pretty standard brew day, but eh, I don't want to throw away all the footage, so let's take a quick look. To start the day, I measured out my water, and then I added a little bit of acid to help adjust the pH, and then I added a little bit of gypsum, and also a Camden tablet to adjust the water. Then it was time to mix in my grain for the 60 minute mash. 
So I did take a pH reading, which came in at 5.3, which is a great range. Then it was time to pull out the grain bag and then get the boil started. So as I mentioned, there were no hop additions at the start of the 30 minute boil. So the first hop addition for this recipe was at the 10 minute mark where I added my brew one along with some Irish moss and a little bit of yeast nutrient. I then used a water bath to drop the temperature down to about 180 degrees Fahrenheit or 82 degrees Celsius. And then I added in the second addition of brew one hops for a 20 minute steep. I chilled down the wort to about 75 degrees Fahrenheit or 24 degrees Celsius before transferring about one gallon or 3.8 liters into each fermenter. This was my first time using the small Furmonster fermenter. It does not have the headspace of the little big mouth bubbler fermenters, but I figured it'd be fine for temperature controlled US05 fermentation. Well now let's get into the focus of the video, the yeast. So I mentioned earlier, I decided to go with a quarter of a pack of dried yeast sprinkled directly on top of the chilled wort. So again, that was 2.75 grams of Lalamon Voss, that was 2.75 grams of Omega Lutra, and 2.9 grams of Fermentus USO5. So at the nine hours after pitching, the Voss and Lutra batches had visible signs of fermentation, and then the following morning they were really churning hard. So at the same time, the USO5 batch was also showing visible signs of fermentation, but at a more slow, standard pace. So on day two, both of the Kvike batches were slowing down fermentation, probably nearing their final gravity. The lid on the Lutra batch had popped off a few times, so I needed to use some twine to keep it in place. The USO5 batch kept up its slow and steady pace. So looking closer at the fermenters on day six, the Lutra batch is done fermenting. Of you know, the three, it has dropped the most clear. The USO5 batch is slowing, but still showing signs of wrapping up fermentation. The beer looks like there's still lots of yeast in suspension. The Voss batch is also done fermenting. It is a bit more haze than the Lutra batch. So I ended up bottling all three batches on day 14. While the Kvike batches likely were ready, say around day five, the USO5 batch needed more time to finish up and start settling out. It might be interesting to see how fast one could turn around a bottle conditioned Kvike brew, but I'll save that experiment for another day. So let's see how this camera angle works so you can see the beers a little better. So as far as the stats on these beers, I took an original gravity of 1052, so that was for all three batches. So the final gravity for both the US05 batch and the Voss batch was 1012. That would give an 76% attenuation, 5.3 ABV. The final gravity measured on the Lutra, I got 1011. Though really, with a hydrometer, there's a little bit of margin of error, so they're really about finished the same. But we'll say at 1011, they gave a 78% attenuation. So 5.4% ABV. So I've heard that Kvike yeast can often drop the pH lower, which often gives maybe a little bit of a tartness to a beer. So I thought it'd be interesting to check, but oddly, they all really came in very close in the pH. I measured the pH on the US05, 4.12, a pH on the Voss, 4.17, and a pH on the Lutra, a 4.21. So really those are all very close, but oddly, the USO5 of the batch was just a slightly lower pH than I measured. So the idea that the Lutra and the Voss were gonna drop the pH, well, at least it didn't come out in the measurements that I took. So these beers have been in a bottle for about three and a half weeks. Let's crack them open and see how they taste. So looking at them visually, I don't see much difference all three of them have just a slight amount of haze. So these ones have been in the fridge, I think for about a week to try to help them clear and settle. Looks like I poured a little less in the USO5 glass. For whatever reason, the Voss one just has a little bit more of a thicker head, but that just really could be the specific bottle or the way I poured them. So this is not the first time I've sampled these, but this first time I'm drinking a full glass of any of them. I've taken them to some homebrew club to share with some people. They definitely felt like there was differences between the beers. So let's see how they turn out today. So we'll start with the USO5. This is a yeast I've used a lot of times in uh, pale ales, IPAs, often say the WLP001 or the 1056 from Y yeast. Um, or lately I've been using a lot more dry yeast. I've been using USO5. So USO5, it's a yeast that I've used a lot and I kind of have a good understanding for it. Let's go in for some aroma. So I haven't used brew on hops much. To be their reputation is kind of a tropical uh, kind of aroma. That's what I'm kind of getting from it. I'm getting a light kind of tropical fruit, maybe a little bit of some kind of berry characteristics. 
clean tasting. I'm not getting much of the sort of malt character, at least right, the aroma on it. If we go in, so this one is the Voss. So I'm getting a little bit more of the orange character. It's not uh, overwhelmingly. You know, I mean, it's there. There's definitely a difference in aroma, say the USO5 and the Voss. Just a little bit more of kind of a, almost like a sweetness, sweet kind of orange kind of aroma. Um, Lutra. Hmm. I'm getting less of the sort of, you know, tropical fruit berry kind of character. So I'm not sure what I'm getting. So the hop aroma is there. I think it's just maybe a little bit muted, maybe compared to the other ones. All right, so let's go in for a taste on these ones. The USO5 batch starting. Um, like I feel like the yeast is, you know, it's fairly clean yeast character. I mean, definitely I think USO5 gets has more character than people um, you know, attribute to it. But I think it works really well in the style. I get, there's a sweetness to the beer. So I get a little bit of a lingering um, sort of biscuit grain kind of bread crust character and light from the uh, the Maris Otter, but it's, it's pretty subtle. Definitely seems like a little bit of a fairly sweet beer. So it's definitely, I feel like the IBUs are not, um, what did we say, you know, 50 or something. Like it's not that bitter. I think it could maybe even use a little bit more bitterness. Maybe it's, it just feels a little sweet maybe. So let's go in for a taste on the Boss one. I definitely feel like I'm getting just a little bit more yeast character, a little bit of that kind of orange, a little bit of that kind of citrus character that's amplified a little bit. Um, Mouthfeel on these two, they, they feel very similar. They're just kind of a medium to medium light kind of mouthfeel. Both pretty solid beers. Let's go in for the Lutra. All right, so that's interesting. So one thing I would say when I've sampled the Lutra, both when I packaged it and then when I've, I've shared them with others, I felt like I got a little bit kind of a sort of a tart twang to it. That was one of the reasons I left these in the fridge for a week. So I thought, well, maybe it's just a little bit of yeast and suspension given that. I'm not really getting that in this bottle. I can see where the idea that Lutra just kind of gets out of the way. In this case, it's kind of a, a plain character is what I would call it. You get a little bit more of the bitterness show through. Um, like I feel like there's less hop character that I get in this and I'm not sure if that's just because these ones have some kind of esters from the yeast that this one doesn't have. So I question, is there still a little bit of a kind of a, a twang that I was getting earlier? I feel like there might be. It could just be that it's kind of getting away. I'm just expressing maybe some of that character from the hops or maybe a little bit of the grain notes a little bit more. So what are my overall thoughts on the yeast and the different beers and the character? So one, as far as the base beer, I mean, it's an interesting beer. I'm not going to say smash beers tend to be a little bit uh, sort of one dimensional. You know, I'm not a massive fan of, say, Maris Otter, just in hoppy beers. I feel like that little bit of that bread crust character maybe doesn't necessarily go well with, say, like tropical hops. But they're a good tasting beer. It's got a little bit of grain complexity. I think that the bitterness on the recipe is just a little bit low. So I need to look a little bit at how I'm calculating uh, bitterness for like those late hop edition beers. So the USO5 one, to me, it just seems like a nice, refreshing, light-bodied, kind of pale ale style, maybe a hoppy blonde style. Voss, so fermented, kind of this mid-range, warm temperature. Got a nice, yeasty, kind of uh, orange character. Like I say, like, I, I enjoy that character from Voss. I think it works well in his hoppy beers. I think the orange, kind of with the brew one, just kind of brings it out a little bit more. So what about the Lutra? What are my kind of thoughts on the Lutra? So I'm a little on the fence. I feel like it's tasting better than it has before. It's a little cleaner. So that's where I'm curious. Maybe if like just needs a little bit of time to settle out and be better, kind of like a lager. Like I do still feel like there's a little bit of a you know, twang, you know, kind of from the yeast. Though again, it's a little bit hard to pick out. Is that coming from the hops or is that coming from something else? My overall impressions, if we're comparing say USO5 versus Lutra, like I feel like the USO5 one it's maybe a little bit more rounded, a little bit of a sweetness, a little bit um, more balanced to it. The Lutra one just seems like it's kind of plain, like the, and maybe that's what why people want Lutra, that it, the yeast is kind of plain and gets out of the way. But I do feel, like I, like I said, like I feel like there's just a little bit kind of this twang thing. It's subtle. So what I'd say, USO5, it's a good yeast. It works well in this case temperature controlled, kept in kind of its ideal temperature range, it makes a good beer. 
Voss. I really do enjoy it. I enjoy it in hoppy beers. I think it accentuates the hops well and it works, plays well with those. It's got a nice uh, flavor, a nice mouthfeel. So I like that beer. I like both of these really well. The Lutra. This gives me some hope that I think Lutra might be good. It'd be kind of interesting to say like a porter or something. You know, pull these hops out of there so we're not, not competing with sort of uh, flavor of hops or in a shootout, you know, with, with a lager yeast. So it'd be interesting to try Lutra some different temperatures. You know, is it is it cleaner or produce a better beer if it's fermented warmer? Does it produce a cleaner, better beer when it's fermented cooler? All right, so let's wrap this up. So I don't have any groundbreaking uh, news about these yeasts. Like I said, I think they're all kind of different. They're all good though, and I think they could make a good beer. Well, if you enjoy this kind of experimental brewing, especially like these yeast trials, I have several of them on my channel already. I'm gonna do more. Well, make sure you hit that subscribe button. If this information has helped you build some great beer, make sure you click that like button. So go ahead and click that bell as well. Then you get notified of my future videos. Well, cheers.